Well, again, another new face as uh, Greg Idra is uh, going to be uh, out for the day. A great job uh, by Greg. I want to actually uh, thank him for making my job a lot easier as this is my first time uh, casting StarCraft II as well. But now uh, joined also by uh, Jorgen Johannesson. Uh, thank you for uh, joining here. Also, uh, your ID is known as Executor. Yes. Uh, you want to uh, tell us uh, how you came up with, uh, with that name? Oh, that's a really long story, but basically I actually get, got it from playing StarCraft 1 uh, back in the days when I was like 13, 14 years old. Okay, well, uh, we're going to look forward to uh, hearing uh, your commentating, your analysis for uh, the last uh, three games uh, that we have on uh, schedule tonight. And uh, we have uh, a Zerg versus uh, Terran matchup. That was actually the same matchup that we had in the uh, first uh, match of the night as well as we have uh, Terrius uh, Foe uh, up against uh, Polt from the Prime Clan, uh, Terran versus uh, Zerg. I haven't actually had a chance to ask you uh, what race uh, you play or, or uh, what you like here. Well, yeah. Uh, when I played Soccer 2, I played Zerg mainly, so this, this suits me really good. Okay, so both uh, you and uh, Idra, uh, Zerg players, uh, not that many uh, Zerg players left in the tournament, but uh, let's talk about our players today, including our Zerg player. This is Terrius Fo. Oh, ooh, I guess that is what they call him uh, here in uh, Korea. Hong Byung Hak is uh, his name. Only 17 years of age, so certainly a youngster that's uh, trying to break uh, in here, make a name for himself in the uh, GSL season two of StarCraft II. Uh, let's see, he's uh, most confident on Scrap Station, by the way, that will be our map for the first set. And uh, the race that he prefers playing against most is the Terran race. Guess what? He's going to be taking on uh, Bolt, oh, who is a Terran player, and uh, he actually likes Zergling as uh, his favorite unit uh, to control. His opponent here is Bolt, and uh, his real name, Chas Hong Hun. Um, he is a Terran player. Uh, don't actually have too much information uh, on him, except for the fact that he did advance to the round of 32 uh, in Season 1. So uh, no stranger to uh, StarCraft II Pro Gaming. He's been there before. And uh, let's see if he can advance to the round of 32 at least uh, again uh, this time around. Certainly, I'm sure he has it as a goal in his mind to do better than uh, he did uh, last time around. Um, do you know much about either of these players, um, or the, or better yet, uh, the matchup that we have here, uh, Terran versus Zerg? Yeah, I don't know so much about the players, but I can tell by the fact that the Zerg is playing Scrap Station and Metalopolis that from the maps, I think he, he's going to be in a favorable position. And from the latest balance changes, I also think that Zerg is actually actually on even turns to Terra now mm -hmm. compared to before so I think he has a good chance I mean seriously his favorite map is Scrap Station and his favorite opponent is Terran and that's his first map so let's see if he takes the first set I think he's a good shot of taking but I guess the favorite here is actually Terry's goal because he played uh, he's playing for a good team uh, Prime and also advanced to run a very few last season so I'm excited for the game all right, well, uh, we'll have to see if uh, that is the case. We're going to take a look at the uh, maps that we're going to see today. As mentioned, Scrap Station is going to be the matchup for set number one. Uh, let's take a look at the maps that uh, the players did not want to play on. Delta Quadrant, Steps of War uh, were, were uh, taken out by Terrius uh, Foe. And uh, Jungle Basin and Shakur's Plateau uh, taken out by Holt. Prime. Other maps there, Lost Temple and Metalopolis, the uh, three sets in total that we're going to see uh, in this uh, matchup. So uh, we've got to take a look at the map there. You mentioned uh, Scrap Station is going to be uh, advantageous, of course, to uh, Terrius uh, Foe, our Zerg player. Um, interestingly enough, he says that uh, he prefers uh, Zerg, Zerglings, as his favorite unit uh, to control. I find that kind of odd in that usually people like the uh, more high-tech units. Uh, maybe that says something about his control, though, that he likes to uh, do early rushes or something. I think most Koreans love the Zerglings. Even in StarCraft 1, I think it's a very favorable unit. And in StarCraft 2, I think Zerglings are great. I mean, you get the f everybody gets the speed speed boost early, and 
It's good against almost any Taiwan unit if you get enough enough of them. And they have the auto surround system now, so it's very easy to ha to micro and you get a great map control early on. You're you're good against harass and you can easily fast expand with it. And so I think it's a great unit overall. So okay, well we are set to go. Uh, we'll see if that is going to be the case in this map or not as we go to set one. All right, uh, this is set number one on Scrap Station. This is uh, Terius Foe. Uh, he will be the red Zerg. He is uh, over at uh, the two o'clock position, and his opponent, the blue Terran, is going to be Holt. Holt Prime. Holt Prime. I wonder if, I mean, you suppose that there's a player named Optimus on the Prime team? <laughs> there should be, right? It, it'd uh, probably be the leader, the, the team captain, you would think. Yeah, but, I mean, if you have a Prime prime team, the guy who actually made a clan should be called Optimus Prime, to be honest, but yeah. You would think, but then that would put so much pressure on you, I mean, to, 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 to lead. I mean, anytime you lose a match, I mean, you know, it's, it's just so much pressure to be put. <laughs> we'll see, Polt uh, Prime here with his uh, SCV moving out early as he's going to take a peek around, scouting here on Scrap Station. Oh, well, this map, I mean, this map is very favorable for Zerg because of the long rush distance, distance in the early game. So you can almost always fast expand before pool. And that is probably what we're going to see from this Zerg right now. And you get an early scout because uh, there's only one spawn location and it's a close distance by air. So your overloads get there early and you always know what the, your opponent is doing. So that's why most Zergs actually like this map. Alright, as uh, we take a look at uh, Holt Prime, taking a look at uh, this location and yeah, oh he was trying to prevent him from uh, setting up his hatchery but uh, was unable to do so, trying to slow him down just a bit. And that was really weird, I mean, the only reason why he sent that SV so early, I guess, was to try to block that expansion for doing it, and he couldn't do it, I don't understand, I didn't even catch how that SV could not block that expansion. I, I wonder if he was, if he took his eye off that for a moment, maybe just right at the time that uh, the drone came out, and that's the only, as you mentioned, it's the only thing that makes sense to me, because it, it did appear that that was his only objective, and to fail at that uh, certainly has to be disappointing, uh, a disappointing start here for uh, Polt. Yeah, I mean, even he had him on a patrol move right where the expansion has to go, so I don't know. It's, it's a, it was a mistake by the character, right? All right, uh, hatchery, a little more than halfway complete. We've got the spawning pool, a little more than halfway complete, and an extractor on the way, so by all means, it does look like a Mutalisk uh, build order or something that would uh, allow for that. Yeah, well, basically in Starcraft 2, you need to get your gas pretty early as Zerg because you, you need the speed links in order to fight the early early, early game harass that might be come of Terran. Especially when you fast expand, you need the mobility of, of defending two bases at the same time against both Reapers or Hellion. Well, Reapers is not that viable anymore with the recent changes, but still you need that speed just to be able to defend two bases at the same time. Yeah, it seemed like when uh, StarCraft II uh, first started, uh, it seemed like uh, in a TVZ, I mean, everybody was using uh, Reapers to uh, harass back and forth uh, on the two bases of uh, Zerg, but uh, we really haven't seen that much uh, anymore, no, certainly not at this level. No, uh, the, Reaper, the Reaper is still uh, Eugene, but you don't get that speed boost before uh, you need a factory now to actually start researching it, so it just it takes a lot of time getting it, so people just got a nullify kind of with that change so you see now people will do a hellion because as you fast expand it's so hard to defend two places at the same time especially when you have only hellion speed right but i mean this surge is actually anticipating it by making not speed links but roaches and roaches is the like the perfect counter against hellions actually and speaking of which uh, two hellions are on their way in fact they are out and immediately uh taking a kill as they are on their way, beautifully protected, as you mentioned, by Terius. So Terius uh, knows exactly that these are on the way, and uh, he has uh, countered by going uh, Roach first. Yeah, the only problem with Roaches is that it's it's a perfect counter for Hellions, but their mobility outside the creeps before Lair Tech and upgrade their own speed is really hard to defend both bases. You need 
roaches at both bases early on, and that's pretty cost. It costs a lot of minerals, and you can't make as much drones, etc. And here are the roaches, three of them to uh, help defend. Does not quite get that Hillian. Uh, one Hellion uh, very low on hit points, the other at full, and the low one is going to head back, uh, looks like, uh, to get uh, repaired. Nope, maybe it's going to uh, hold on. It's only gone to the uh, observation deck, so looks like uh, he's happy to leave it. Uh, Overlord might be taken out. Looks like it probably will. Starport on the way, or actually Starport complete, by the way. Yeah, well, I think... Uh, he sacked that overload just to get that extra scout information. Uh, players tend to do that in order to see if the Terran is going to attack to, uh, to uh, early air units like Banshee or Vikings, or they're going to go expansion and then you can react uh, as a circle. Right? But losing two overloads like that is one too many, I think. That is certainly going to hurt, and that is actually going to put uh, Terrius in the minus in terms of unit count. So uh, he now just gets his uh, next Overlord, so he's back in the plus. But uh, Banshee on the way for some harassment here. And that is uh, going to bring these Queens on to uh, help defend. It's going to push him back a bit. But the Banshee already with four kills before being taken out. Uh, not bad for harassment from the Banshee. Yeah, but I mean, the Zerg anticipated it. I mean, he has like three Queens uh, ready for, for that Banshee attack. And... Yeah, you anticipate a Banshee attack, when you see two Hellions, you, you know that he's going fast factory, he's going fast attack, and got and he got the Banshee attack. But the Zerg really needs to do now is to, either he needs to secure another base, or make a strong a strong attack. But he can't stay on two bases against two bases for a very long time. Bunker, being occupied now. And let's take a look at what uh, Tarius is up to. Another uh, harassment play here from this uh, Banshee. Banshee now up to five kills before being taken out. So that's a total of nine kills from Banshee uh, uh, harassment. Yeah, the Terran is really abusing the short air distance, but this is a common strategy for Terran to do against Zerg, is that they will make some Banshees just poke on the drone, drones while while you're not maybe paying attention and get in. Because you only need two shots for a Banshee to kill one drone. So. They go down pretty fast. Zerglings working on uh, taking out this uh, debris. And should get it in about another 30 seconds if he continues to work at it. Mutalisks are out. Here's two of the four that are available right now to Terrius. This is actually very smart. He's going to destroy that and then run in with the Banelings, I think. While harassing the, uh, the main, ah, oh, he's just running into the server. Oh, the Siege server. tank out for uh, Holt, and uh, here's some zergling harassment here at the natural. Able to get right in there, and Marines here to uh, press them back, and that forces the uh, zerglings to retreat. I don't know. I, I think. I think a better option there was to kill the destructible rod and then run in with the banelings and then get like all the SVs. You could have gone like both and use and all the SVs so you could have that But maybe he's got some other plans for this Instead, going uh, now with the mutalisks and great uh, play there for uh, Terrius. That draws cheers from our audience. And coming around to the natural now. Mutalisks on the backside of the expansion. Zerglings on their way around. As it is uh, Terius' turn to lay some aggression. He's going to send a Zergling down towards the 7, 8 o'clock area to scout out. Make sure that there isn't uh, uh, extra expansion there. Or, or extra buildings of any sort. Nest as more harassment here this time from Terius. Both players uh, taking their hits. And Banelings on the way. Serg is actually making a Baneling trap for those four Banelings. That's pretty sweet. And he's making a third third base right now. So I think the Serg is, is doing really good now. Yeah, the Terran just needs to get a big ball going, but. 
it's going to be dangerous moving out with those pain links. I don't think he will ever expect that too. A couple of infestors uh, on the way as well for uh, Terius that he's got uh, set down. So uh, a couple of different uh, things that uh, Terius can do here in terms of his uh, strike attack. And uh, Polt trying to uh, take out uh, some of the debris as well to try to uh, give him an extra alleyway to go through. And some more harassment here at the backside. Zergling harassment as well, helping out. And here come the Banelings. Infestors in place. All sorts of units, a good mix here for Tarius. Looks like Pult's wet and ready for it on the other side. And uh, keeping those uh, burrowed, actually uh, allowing Tarius to spot what's going on as well. There's the scan, and that's going to allow uh, Pult to take out those units. I really liking the Zerg's army composition. Even though the Terran is up like 20 food, I still think the Zerg has the right unit mix to deal with this push. Some more Mutalisk uh, harassment. And here comes the push from the Terran side. Mutalisk from the backside trying to take out the tank. And here come the Banelings. Backing off. Medivac's doing the best they can to heal up. As our Terran Holt gets uh, ready for another attack. He lost one tank. It's replenished. Oh, nice coming to that And look at this! Mutilus just taking out all the Marines! About 15 Marines taken out by these Mutilisks for Terius! Trying to bait some more. And Zerg is finally getting his third up and running as well. Soon his economy will boom and he's still and he's actually ahead now in food count as well. So it's looking good for Zerg. You just need to keep his composure and keep this push from not happening and he's will be, will be fine. Continuing to scan is Polt trying to chase away those roaches. Takes out a Mutalisk. A couple of stray units by themselves. A little poor... Uh, Micro by Darius at that point, but look at this! Oh, all sorts of damage done to Polt's army! Here comes Darius from the backside. He's got a bit of a sandwich. Backs off with the Banelins. Coming the back door route. Yeah, he, he needed to do that. He's trying to avoid the siege tanks that is lined up in the, in the, in the funnel between the bases, right? So he's trying to go for, for a backdoor attack, maybe outflanking, but right now he just needs to be patient and not rally point his units like he's doing right now. That's really bad. Queens are forced to defend against these Marines. Zergling from the backside. Medivax there to uh, help out. Beanlings doing some damage. And there go the Marines. Mutalist chased off. Lots of medevacs there. Five of them for Holt Prime. I Plenty think, of Marines. I think both players are playing really good now. You think they're raising strength? Excellent. Missile turrets in place for Holt Prime, chasing away the Mutos. And looks like uh, Holt Prime looking to expand. He 
wants to expand, but not going to be able to just yet, as the Mutalisks uh, still controlling the territory. Terry is doing the best he can to prevent Hulk from expanding. Here comes the command center, and here come the Mutalisks. They does land. Bailings on their way! Bailing taking out the Marines! Taking a hit on the tank as well! No defense for the tanks as the Mutalists are going to take them down! Mutalists take out another tank! And this might have been a little premature for Bolt Prime! More Marines come! And finally, getting their units there. Terrius is going to back off for the time being. Both players now with three bases. Oh, but Zerg is way ahead in the food turn. He just needs to attack right now. And then I think this game is... And here he goes after that third base. It is not defended that well. Zerglings followed by Bailings on the backside. Mutalisks up up top. One... Two turrets in place, and it is going to uh, work for the time being. That's enough to chase them off. A little bit of mi miss micro or good army placement by the turret, keeping the marines so far back. The banelings couldn't reach before half of his muta army and links were already dead. So excellent control by the turret. I mean, he was down 50 food and still managed to hold that. I mean, yes. And and speaking of his third base, I mean, he's got his other two bases, most of his units there. Um, but to be able to hold off his uh, third base uh, that well, uh, great job by Polt. And the longer that uh, yeah. Terrius waits for oh, that no. third base, I mean, he's going to he's going to uh, allow uh, Polt back into this. Now he needs to go right now. I think he needs to go right now. But it, this is the problem with like Terran is that he can't count like this. So he needs just to find a good angle for his banelings. And here come the Zerglings, followed by banelings. But uh, here's a counter attack the other way, going into the main base right now is actually Polt Prime. We have a double attack here. Banelings taking out this expansion. Roach is helping out as well. Roaches and Banelings taking out all the workers. Meanwhile, here's the attack on the other side. The dropship here into the main base. And well defended by Terius as Polt Prime is forced to retreat. Mutal is taking, chasing after the medevac. And they get the medevac. Huge play here by Terius. And here they go to try to finish off that base. Zerglings and Roaches. Right. Another base uh, on the backside, by the way, for Holt Prime. And that's exactly where uh, Terrius is trying to get through. He's trying to get it rid of this uh, debris so he can bust through uh, to that uh, hidden expansion. Terrius also uh, expanding down to the 7 o'clock area. But uh, this expansion is currently up and running for Polt Prime over at 9 o'clock. I mean, what's huge here is that he, he got the Spire when he counterattacked the main, so he knows he can safely expand to the island for that. That's kind of like saved in the game. Here come the Banelings doing some damage, trying to take out these tanks. The tanks are gone, but the Marines are being chased back now. All sorts of, uh, and there goes the command center. So right now, Terrius, four bases running. Meanwhile, Holt Prime only with uh, three, and this one under fire right now, not running at full capacity. Holt Prime trying to push forward across that uh, bridgeway as he might be uh, reaching a desperation point. I mean, right now he has no income. His island expansion is not saturated, and he knows that the Zerg has one, probably two bases running. So he needs to do something right now with the army he has. He can't, he can't wait. Anymore. And this might be it, going after that hatchery. Banelings are uh, standing by as well with some roaches. Terran trying to get a contain in. As uh, Terry is trying to get in from the other side. I don't they do get the hatchery. I don't 
and uh, Paul Prime needs to get something done in uh, this attack to the main, or he's going to be in trouble. Of course, uh, Banelings are ready to uh, take out all these SCVs at that 9 o'clock expansion. I think actually... Uh... Oh, and look at this! Paul Prime doing a lot of damage here! Backs off after getting a few buildings, and here comes the attack! Trying to get the command center with the main link! Gets the whole command center! Wow, Pulp Prime down to just two bases now! Meanwhile, the main base for Terrius is under fire. Here come the siege tanks! Zergling from the backside! Desperation play here, both players doing all sorts of attacks on each other. Who knows who can win this? Bainlings up from the backside. How much damage is he going to get? Got to get all the tanks. Chasing after the Marines. Here go the Bainlings. No, great control there from Pull Prime. What control? Pull Prime keeps his Marines intact. Now he's going after the lair. Oh, the tech tree is falling. Terrius losing his entire tech tree. His main is gone. It's absolutely decimated. Meanwhile, Holt Prime has nothing but his main left. Holt Prime might be able to take this one down. Look at this game. What a game here by Holt Prime. <laughs> Meanwhile, another lair, another uh, base here under fire. Going after the natural is Pulp Prime. Still anyone's game. What a game we're seeing here. Who do you like in this one? Do, do you see one player ahead or the other? It, it, it seems like a, a seesaw battle going back and forth here. Honestly, the marker of the turn is just keeping him in the game. I think the Zerg has, has control. He has two, two mining bases against zero. Uh, yeah. And this Physical. might be the last straw. As running out of money is Pulp Prime. Pulp Prime uh, floating a uh, command center over to uh, the 9 o'clock center area, trying to get another base going. He's got the units, but he doesn't have any economy. The Terran is only at 30 food, while the Surge is at around uh, Antwerp. So I think this is pretty much basically over if it's just the Surge decides to attack before the Terran can get his mule, uh, mules and getting uh, income again. Speaking of income, that's exactly what Pulp Prime is trying to do at this base here, towards the center, left of the center of the map. This is where the final battle might be taking place. Pulp Prime needs to get some economy going from that mineral set there. His main and his natural are both completely depleted. Here come the Banelings, and this might be it if he finishes them off with a Baneling Splash. This should be GG. I really can't see him lasting much longer this time. A valiant effort by Paul Prime, but this, as the last Marine goes down, uh, is going to be GG, and what a first set we have been treated to. Paul Prime types in GG, and indeed, Terrius is your winner. What a long game <laughs> that was. But in the end, Terrius comes out on top. Wow, certainly a seesaw battle we saw there. Uh, various moments that uh, we saw the, the battle go, but uh, uh, Terrius, he just had too much in terms of uh, the macro game. Polt Prime uh, doing the best he can to stay in it, to stay on the aggressive. He broke into the main, uh, looked like he might be able to get something going there, but in the end, he just didn't have an economy going. Yeah, actually I felt like that the game, the Zerg had the control of the game all the way. Even from the first two Hellions, he, he made roaches, just predicted, like it was a perfect way of Zerg reading like the meta changes with the patch. He knew that the only viable option for harassing on Scrap Station was going to go Hellion harass. So he skipped totally the Zerg in speed that has been like a common opener for Zerg for like forever and just went straight for roaches, defended, perfect. Uh, didn't lose too many drones in the Banshee RS, always kept one base ahead, uh, always kept the map control, never allowed turn three bases, only kept 
turn on two bases at all time was keeping his third alive all the time. All right, well, we are set to go to uh, set number two. Let's go right now.